Autobiographical comics often referred to in the comics field is simply autobio or autobiography in the form of comic books or comic strips. The form first became popular in the underground comics movement and has since become more widespread. It is currently most popular in Canadian, American and French comics. All artists listed below are from the U.S. unless otherwise specified. Topic. 1880s Rafael Bordalo Pinero (1846–1905) made an attempt of an autobiographical comics exercise. In his 1881 graphic reportage book No Lazaretto de Lisboa, The Lazaretto of Lisbon, by including himself and personal thoughts. Some of Bordalo Pinero's panels and strips were also autobiographical, such as self-caricatures of personal anecdotes from his travel in Brazil. Topic: 1910s. Faking, 1910s to 1930s newspaper cartoonist, drew herself looking like olive oil in autobiographical strips portraying her reportages, opinions, and personal life. Topic: 1920s. Carlos Botello (1899–1982) had a weekly comic page in a style that mixed up chronicle, autobiography, journalism, and satire. Running from 1928 to 1950 in the Portuguese magazine Sempre Fix. Topic: 1930s. Henry Yoshitaka, Kiyama's The Four Immigrants Manga, drawn 1924-1927, exhibited 1927 in San Francisco, self-published 1931. These 52 two-page strips drew from the experiences of Kiyama and three friends, mostly as Japanese student immigrants to San Francisco between 1904 and 1907, plus material up to 1924. 1960s Shinji Nagashima created Mangaka Zankoku Monogatari Cruel Tale of a Cartoonist in 1961 Yoshiharu Suge born 1937 published in 1966 his autobiographical story Chico Chico the Java Sparrow depicting his daily life as a struggling manga artist living with a bar hostess making most of their money Published in the seminal magazine Garo, it started the movement of Watakushi manga, I manga, or comics about me. These short graphic non-fictions, including memoirs, chronicles, travel or dream diaries, were also represented by Yu Takita, Tadao Suge, and Shinichi Abe. See below. Yu Takita (1932–1990) started in 1968 his Terajima Cho stories, Terajima Neighborhood Mystery Tales. They were series of vignettes about 1930s life in this Tokyo district where his parents ran a tavern. Tadao Suge, born 1941, started in 1968 his personal stories, later collected in Trash Market. Topic: 1970s. Sam Glansman started in April 1970 his USS Stevens Autobio Stories 1970-1977 about his war service, as four pages in DC Comics's title Our Army at War. Beside memoirs of war actions he witnessed, many are personal vignettes of embarrassing moments, including as an artist. As comics historian John B. Cook noted, those autobiographical tales about the sometimes mundane, frequently horrifying experiences aboard a Fletcher-class U.S. Navy destroyer during World War II were beginning to appear regularly, debuting two years before Binky Brown. Shinichi Abe born 1950, started in 1971 his autobiographical series Miyoko Asagaya Kibben, The Miyoko Asagaya Feeling, or Miyoko, Asagaya's Feeling, for Garo magazine. It chronicled his 1970s bohemian life with his model girlfriend Miyoko in the Asagaya district of Tokyo. The manga was adapted into the 2009 film Miyoko. 
Justin Green, though not the first author of Autobio comics, is generally acknowledged to have pioneered the confessional genre in English language comics because of the immediate influence of his highly personal autobiographical comics on other creators: Kaminsky, Crum, Spiegelman, Picard. See below. This was done through the veiled autobio of his alter egos, Binky Brown. Stories, notably the March 1972 comic book Binky Brown Meets the Holy Virgin Mary, an extremely personal work dealing with Green's Catholic and Jewish background and obsessive compulsive disorder. In October 1972, Japanese manga artist Keiji Nakazawa created the 48 page story, I Saw It! All Wa Meter, which told of his first hand experience of the bombing of Hiroshima. This was followed by the longer, fictionalized work Barefoot Gen, Heidashi no Gen, later adapted into three films. Aileen Kaminsky followed Green in November 1972 with her veiled autobio five pager, Goldie, a Neurotic Woman, in Women's Comics No. 1. Art Spiegelman followed Green in 1973 with his four page, Prisoner on the Hell Planet. In Short Order Comics No. 1, about his feelings after the suicide of his Holocaust survivor mother a strip later included in Mouse, see below. Robert Crumb and Aileen Kaminsky released in 1974 Dirty Laundry Comics No. 1, a joint confessional comic book documenting their budding romance, though depicted aboard a fantasy spaceship. In 1976, Harvey Picard began his long-running self-published series American Splendor, which collected short stories written by Picard, usually about his daily life as a file clerk, and illustrated by a variety of artists. The series led to Picard meeting his wife Joyce Brabner, who later co-wrote their graphic novel Our Cancer Year about his brush with lymphoma. In 1977, the Italian magazine Alta Alta starts publishing Andrea Pazienza's La Straordinary Aventure di Pentothel, Pentothel's Extraordinary Adventures, in which the author details in a stream of consciousness his own experiences with drugs, arts, politics, counterculture, and the movement of 1977, through a thinly veiled alter ego. In 1978, Eddie Campbell started his autobio strip, In the Days of the Ace Rock and Roll Club. March 1978 to March 1979, this led to his Alex stories, see below. In 1979, Malaysian cartoonist Lat published his childhood memoir The Kampung Boy, drawn 1977-1978. In the late 1970s, Jim Valentino began his career with some autobio mini comics, released in the early 1980s. In 1985, he published his autobio series Valentino, later collected in vignettes. In 1997, he created the semi-autobio series A Touch of Silver about a boy coming of age in the 1960s. In 2007, he revisited autobio with drawings from life, also collected in vignettes. Throughout the 1970s, autobiographical writing was prominent in the work of many female underground cartoonists, in anthologies such as women's comics, ranging from comical anecdotes to feminist commentary based on the artists' lives. Topic. 1980s In 1980, Art Spiegelman combined biography and autobiography in his Pulitzer Prize-winning Mouse serialized 1980-1991, about his father's Holocaust experiences, his own relationship with his father, and the process of interviewing him for the book. This work had a major effect on the reception of comics in general upon the world of mainstream prose literature, awakening many to the potential of comics as a medium for stories other than adventure fantasy. In 1982, Eddie Campbell's Alex stories started with the Scottish, Australian artist as a young man drifting through life with his friends, and followed him through marriage, parenthood, and a successful artistic career. They were later collected in The King Canute Crowd, Three Piece Suit, and other books. Campbell's English colleague Glenn Dakin created the Abraham Rat stories, collected in Abe, Wrong for All the Right Reasons, which began as fantasy and became more contemplative and autobiographical. Spain Rodriguez drew a number of stories, collected in My True Story, about being a motorcycle gang member in the 1950s. Underground legend Robert Crumb focused increasingly on autobiography in his 1980s stories in Weirdo magazine. Many other autobiographical shorts would appear in Weirdo by other artists, including his wife, Aileen Kaminsky Crumb, Phoebe Gluckner, see below in 1990s section, and Dory Sader. In 1987, Sam Glansman released his World War II graphic memoir A Sailor's Story Marvel Comics, a more personal extension of his 1970s USS. 
Stephen's War Stories. In 1988, Andrea Pazienza releases Pompeo, his last graphic novel, depicting the gradual downfall of a heroin addict, a largely autobiographical character, up to his eventual suicide. Jim Woodring's unusual auto journal. Jim combined dream art with occasional episodes of realistic autobiography. David Collier, a Canadian ex-soldier, published autobiographical and historical comics in Weirdo and later in his series Collier's. In 1987, DC Comics Anthology Wasteland 1987 featured, unusually for a mainstream title, as well as more conventional forms of black comedy and horror, semi-autobiographical stories based on the life of co-writer Del Close. One of the stories also parodied the autobiographical stories of Harvey Picar, portraying a version of Picar's famous appearance on Late Night with David Letterman, in which Picar's vehement critique of General Electric had earned him a long-time ban from the program. In 1989, John Porcellino started in his long-running autobio series King Cat Comics, still ongoing. Topic: 1990s. Autobiographical work took the alternative comics scene by storm during this period. The autobiographical genre had turned into English-speaking alternative comics subcultures, signature genre, in much the way that superhero stories dominated the American mainstream comic books, the stereotypical example recounting the awkward moment which followed when, the cartoonist sitting alone in a coffee shop when their ex-girlfriend walks in. However many artists pursued broader themes. Maltese American Joe Sacco appeared as a character in his journalistic comics, beginning with Yahoo, collected in notes from a defeatist, and Palestine. Howard Cruz's graphic novel Stuck Rubber Baby told a fictionalized version of Cruz's young adulthood as a gay man in the South during civil rights conflicts. In the anthology series Real Stuff, Dennis Eichhorn followed Picard's example of writing true stories for others to illustrate, but unlike Picard, emphasized unlikely tales of sex and violence. Many of the real stuff stories took place in Eichhorn's native state of Idaho. In 1993, Eichhorn received an Eisner Award nomination for Best Writer and his Real Stuff series received nominations for both Best Continuing Series and Best Anthology. In 1994, Real Stuff again received an Eisner Award nomination for Best Anthology. One of the most popular self-published mini-comics of the 1990s in America, Silly Daddy, depicted Joe Chiapetta's parenthood and divorce, sometimes realistically and sometimes in a parallel fantasy story. The story continued in trade paperbacks and as a webcomic. Julie Doucet's series Dirty Plot, from Canada, began as a mix of outlandish fantasy and dream comics, but moved toward autobiography in what was later collected as My New York Diary. A trio of Canadian friends, Seth Palukaval, Chester Brown, Yummy Fur, The Playboy, I Never Liked You, and Joe Matt, Peep Show, gained rapid renown in North America for their different approaches to autobiography. Brown and Matt were also notorious for depicting embarrassing personal moments such as masturbation and nose picking. Seth created some controversy by presenting realistic fictional stories as if they had actually happened, not as a ploy to fool writers but as a literary technique. However, some readers did get fooled. Phoebe Glerkner created a series of semi-autobiographical stories drawing on her adolescent experiences with sex and drugs in San Francisco, collected in A Child's Life and other stories. She later revisited similar material in her 2004 illustrated novel The Diary of a Teenage Girl, an account in words and pictures. Seven Miles a Second, written by painter David Wojnarowicz and illustrated by James Romberger and Marguerite Van Cook, was based on Wojnarowicz's life and his response to the AIDS epidemic. The graphic novel David Chelsea in Love described the eponymous author's romantic difficulties in New York City and Portland. Rick Veach told the story of his twenties entirely through a dream diary in the CryptoZoo volume of Rare Bit Fiends. Ariel Schrag's tetralogy Awkward, Definition, Potential, and Likewise, about discovering her sexual identity in high school, was unusual in having been mostly completed while in high school. Jim Valentino's A Touch of Silver portrayed his unhappy youth in the 1960s. English artist Raymond Briggs, best known for his children's books, told the story of his parents' marriage in Ethel and Ernest. James Kokalka started to turn his daily life into a daily four-panel strip starting in 1998, collected in sketchbook diaries, and later in the webcomic, American Elf. Topic. 
1990s in France This period also saw a rapid expansion of the French small press comic scene, including a new emphasis on autobiographical work. Fabrice Niaud's acclaimed journal was the first lengthy autobiographical series in French comics. David B., another artist who had first published fantasy comic stories, produced the graphic novel L'Ascension du Haut Mal, published in English as Epileptic, applied B.'s distinctive non-realistic style to the story of his equally unusual upbringing, in which his family moved to a macrobiotic commune and sought many other cures for B.'s brother's grand mal seizures. Louis Trondheim portrayed himself and his friends, albeit with animal heads, in approximative continuum comics, some of which was later published in English as The Nimrod. Much of Edmund Boudouin's later work is based on his personal and family history. Dupuis and Berberain's Journal d'un Album and Jean Christophe Menu's Livre de Famille also had a significant influence on the French autobiographic graphic novel scene. Topic: 2000s. Iranian exile Marjane Satrapi created the multi-volume Persepolis, originally published as a newspaper serial in France, about her childhood during the Iranian Revolution. Canadian animator Guy Delisle published several travelogues such as Shenzhen, Pyongyang and Jerusalem. The Spiral Cage, by English artist Al Davison, is about Davison's experience of living with spina bifida. Jeffrey Brown's Clumsy 2001 and Unlikely 2003 told the story of two failed relationships using hundreds of single-page stories. Craig Thompson releases Blankets, an award-winning graphic memoir of first love, religious identity, and coming of age. Marzina Soa wrote Marzi, a series of comics about her childhood in 1980s-era Poland. Erica Moan authored online diary comic Da, from 2003 to 2009. Art Spiegelman wrote In the Shadow of No Towers 2004, an oversized graphic memoir about his experiences during the 9-11 attacks. Josh Neufeld published his Zurich Award-winning A Few Perfect Hours 2004, documenting his backpacking adventures through Southeast Asia, Central Europe, and Turkey. Joe Kubert wrote Yossel April 14, 1943 2005, a fake autobiographical graphic novel about what would have happened if his parents hadn't moved from Poland to the U.S. and they would have been there during the Holocaust. Italian comic book artist G.I.P.I. releases several graphic novels inspired by his own life experiences, Appunti per una storia di guerra Notes for a War Story, 2005, s. 2006, about his father, La mia vita de segnata male My Life Badly Drawn, 2008. Zurich Award winner Steve Peters wrote an illustrated chemistry 2005 about a failed relationship. He drew one panel a day for a year. The entire comic is 32 pages long with a total of 365 panels. Each panel's date is hidden somewhere inside it. Chemistry won the 2006 Howard Eugene Day Memorial Prize. Alison Bechtel wrote an illustrated Fun Home 2006, about her relationship with her father, and it was named by Time magazine as number one of its 10 best books of the year. Martin Lemmelman wrote Mendel's Daughter 2006, based on his mother's recorded confessions of her life during the Holocaust. He inserts a lot of family pictures as well. Miriam Catton wrote We Are On Our Own, a memoir 2006, a graphic memoir about her survival, with her mother, of the Holocaust. Danny Gregory wrote Everyday Matters, after he taught himself to draw following a traumatic moment in his life, his wife was hit by a train and became paralyzed. In April 2007, N.I., Y.P. E. Driesen, a Dutch comic artist, published the first autobiographical photo comic called Y.P.E. Plus Willem. With photos he showed everyday happenings in his life with his former boyfriend Willem. He still publishes his comic at 1 N.I. Aileen Kaminsky Crum published Need More Love, a graphic memoir, 2007, her life story, with inserted photographs. Carol Lay wrote and illustrated The Big Skinny, 2008, about her experiences with weight loss. Topic: 2010s. Alison Bechtel published A You My Mother, 2012, an autobiographical graphic memoir that examines Bechtel's relationship with her mother through the lens of psychoanalysis. 
Erica Moan began O Joy Sex Toy 2013, a semi-autobiographical online comic strip. O Joy offers Moan's insights into her experiences of and reflections on sex-positive culture and also features reviews of sex toys. Congressman and civil rights leader John Lewis releases March, Book One 2013, the first volume of an autobiographical graphic novel trilogy, co-written by Andrew Iden and drawn by Nate Powell.